I make this recording because I know that God loves Roman Catholic people. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. But whatever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God loves everybody in the world. And he wants everybody to be saved and come to a knowledge of him. And so I'm making this tape because I know that many Catholic people love God and love Jesus Christ. And they don't know the difference between what the Bible says and what the Roman Catholic Church would ask them to believe. So I asked if they would, in God's holy church, that they would take the Bible, and I will give them some Bible verses to read, and if you love God with all your heart, you'll do what he says. I'm going to go through some of the things that the Roman Catholic Church says and some of the things that the Bible says. And I say these not to condemn anybody, but to show everybody the truth. And one of the most important things is that the Roman Catholic Church says that the Pope is the head of the church on earth. And that is, you know, every Roman Catholic would know that, that a man was the Pope, he sits in Rome and he is the head of the church. But the Bible says, even as Christ is the head and he is the saviour of the body, that's in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23, he's saying Christ is the head of the church. And also in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18, and he is the head of the body. The church who was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. He is first. He has to have the preeminence. And that's Jesus Christ. So what we have to understand that the head of the church, the real church, the church of those who are born again of the Spirit of God, those who are saved, those who are going to heaven one day, the head of the church is Jesus Christ. That's the number one thing we need to understand. The Bible condemns any other belief except in the true belief of Jesus Christ. Another thing that the Roman Catholic Church says, that there is a place to purge our sins or pay for our unpaid sins, where we get the word purgatory. And sadly, many people are still paying and still praying to get their loved ones from a place called purgatory. But that's not mentioned in the Bible. The Bible says, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, also in Luke chapter 16, verse 22, and it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that the judgment. Showing in Luke's Gospel also that there is no place for sins to be paid for by the ceremonies of men. But that when we die we go to hell or heaven, depending if we are right with God. If we have repented our sins and accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Saviour, and put our trust in Him, then we go directly to the Father. There is no grey area, there is no in-between. There is hell or heaven for everybody on the earth. Another thing that the Roman Catholic Church says, that God has set over mankind bishops and priests, or a so-called priest system, where you go to your local Catholic church and you go to a priest and he speaks to God on your behalf. He's your mediator. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and the man, the man Jesus Christ. There's only one way and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We don't need to go to a man in a box. We don't need to go to a woman anywhere else. We go directly to Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. The Bible says that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. And that's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It means that we're all priests. We can all serve God. A priest is somebody that would serve God. We can all serve God because Jesus has died for us. And he's made a way that we might serve him now. We don't. There's no special priest over us. The Bible says, Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who were great exercise of authority over them, yet shall not be so among you. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 and 27. We have no authority only Jesus Christ. We don't need to go to a man or anybody special in a box because Jesus has died for us. We can go directly to the Father through Jesus Christ. It's so important that we understand that we don't need a man's system. We need what God says. The Roman Catholic Church says that Mary was born without sin. Let me just tell you, the Bible says that Mary is blessed amongst all women and we believe that she's in heaven with the Father and with Jesus Christ right now. Because she called upon the Lord. But to say she was born without sin is to deny what God says in his word. In Psalm chapter 51 verse 5 it says, Behold I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. All of us are conceived with sin. 
And Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Meaning that all is everybody. We all need a saviour. And Mary herself said in the Bible, in Luke chapter 1 verse 46 and 47, And Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit is rejoiced in God my saviour. Mary needed a saviour, and that was Jesus Christ. She's, is she evil? Is she terrible? No. God loves her. But all of us have sinned. All of us. We all need Jesus Christ. Another thing that the Roman Catholic says is that is, it's all right, or even encourages to pray or speak to the dead and ask them to help for their help in prayers. But the Bible says, There shall not be found among anybody who consults with a familiar spirit or a wizard or a necromancer, one who speaks to the dead. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 and 12. Talking to the dead is necromancy. That's what the same as class as spiritism. We don't need to talk to the dead when they're living. We have to talk to pray to Jesus Christ. And that's what we must do. The Roman Catholic Church says it's all right to pray to Mary and ask her to speak to Jesus on our behalf, which sounds like a good idea. You want to get to the son, get to the mother. But that's not what the Bible says. And Jesus, when he taught the disciples how to pray when they came to him, Jesus says, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, you know the Lord's prayer. It's when you speak to the Father in Jesus' name. We are to obey our Lord directly and pray directly to the Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ only. Also, if you look in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6 and chapter 9 verse 15, these are from the teachings from the Holy Bible that we really need to look at. Also, the Roman Catholic Church says that the priest has a power to change the wafer of the host into the bodily person of our Lord Jesus Christ during the Mass. During the Mass, the Roman Catholic people then eat Jesus Christ. I say the Roman Catholic people because that's what they believe and that's what they are told. But that isn't so. It's not what the Bible talks about at all. When Jesus was at the table speaking to the disciples in Luke chapter 22, and also Paul speaking to the Corinthian church, he said, This is my body which is you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now when he had the piece of bread in his hand, he was sitting there. So he wasn't saying, this is my body. He was saying, we have to remember. When we come around the Lord's table, we remember what Christ has done for us. So when we take the bread and wine today, we remember that Christ broke his body and poured out his blood for me and for you. We remember what he did. It would be terrible for us to think that we could take God, eat him and chew him, go down to our stomach into our gastric acid, and then to go to the toilet to send him to a sewage. That's abhorrent to God and we should never think that because that's not what God believes. It's not what God wants anybody to believe. That isn't true. It would be terrible for anybody to think that Jesus, a Jew, would do anything that, 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 would, call, that would be called idolatry to say that a piece of bread is Jesus Christ or a piece of bread is God. We should never have these ideas. This is not the teachings of the Bible. We are to take these symbols that represent the broken body and the poured out precious blood of Jesus Christ. They're symbols just to take, till we remember what the real thing, we remember what God has done for us on the cross. We must always remember, we must go to the teachings of the word of God. Also, the Roman Catholic Church says that we can have graven images and idols in our churches and at home and in the schools, and we're asked to pray to the so-called saints, the dead human beings. You know, the Bible in the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 and 5 says thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image and thou shalt not bow down to them and that's so important you know God is he can hear he can see and he's not deaf but any idol is deaf dumb and blind and so we don't pray to a wooden image a golden image or a stone image we pray directly to Jesus Christ the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. When we start to put our faith and trust in anything else except Jesus Christ, we commit adultery, a spiritual adultery. It's idolatry. So the Bible says we should keep away from idolatry at all times. Only trust in Jesus and him alone. Also in the Catholic Church, they have what they call church tradition. 
and it goes above the Bible. So they say men's traditions is greater than the Bible. But the Bible says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. And that's so important. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The scripture is given by inspiration of God. So that must become first. Also it says in Second John's epistle verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. So if we don't want, do, want, do what God says in his word we don't have God. Who should we believe a man or Jesus Christ? The Bible says that the last verse in the Bible in the book of Revelation 22. That we shouldn't add or take away from the word of God. And if anybody says that church traditions is greater than the word of God, they are wrong. Because we have to trust in God. I don't make this recording to condemn anybody. But I make it that you may find the truth for yourself. And it won't be you saying, oh, well, somebody converted me. But you speak directly to God. If you're not sure about the things I've said, you pray and read the Bible yourself and say, God, you show me the truth. The Bible says that God will lead you into all truths. You know, if you need to... Uh, help or prayer, maybe some of the things that we discuss, you can ring me. 07973 442 649. And I'll tell you where the nearest church is where you can find God for the truth. The most important thing in these last days, because Jesus is coming back soon and he's going to judge the living and the dead, that we be right with God. And the only way we can do that is to do what the Bible says, because the Bible is the inspired word of God. And we follow Jesus Christ in him alone. He is the one that loves you. He is the one that saved you. He is the one that's poured out his precious blood for you. All we need to do is repent, believe, and under our life to Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, turn to God tonight. Say, God, help me. I am a sinner. Forgive me. I repent of my sin. Come into my life and give me a new life. That I may live a new life in this world and the next one to come. And if you truly believe God and you truly love him and you want him and you accept what he did for you on the cross, he will save you and he will lead you into all truth. God bless you.